Hello again, kids. We've traveled to Rockefeller Hall on Cornell University, and we're in a lab that is uh, exhibiting a lab that I garnered from the CIPT program this summer. Now, CIP stands for Center for Nanoscale System Institute for Physics Teachers. Now, this first one here that I'm going to show you is a analogy for a series circuit. Basically, what do we know about series circuits? Series circuits are called series because all the components line up in series in a single path. So you can see that we run through this particular circuit, if you will, in just a single line. Now, some other analogies. The pack in here is actually a pump, and this is analogous to a battery in a basic DC electric circuit. The water that you see, which is red or pink, is the, represents the electrons or the current flow through the circuit. The resistors in the circuit, right here there are two tubes, a long orange tube, and basically that or there's orange packing material stuffed inside of a tube to restrict flow more. And then this purple one has less material in the tube, so it restricts flow less. So you have a big resistor, the orange, and you have a smaller resistor, the purple. I have two sensors on here. I have a flow rate meter here and a flow rate meter here. And you can see that at the moment they're flowing or turning at about the same rate. Now what this means is that the current in our series circuit is staying constant from one side of the circuit to the other. I could take one of those flow rate sensors and insert it in between my two resistors but I would still get the same amount of current. So one important analogy, an important thing to remember about series circuit is that current in a series circuit stays constant. It only has one path to follow. Now, another important thing I want to note, um, another part of the analogy is you see here we have columns of water before and after each of the resistors. These columns of water represent the relative amount of energy the water has as it enters and leaves the resistor. Now for this analogy to work, we let's consider this height to be the potential energy per unit charge or the voltage, all right? And what you can see is that from the beginning of the first large resistor to the other side, we have a nice large drop in the water level. And we actually refer to that as a voltage drop, all right? Difference in potential. And then you can see when we go through the smaller resistor, we have another voltage drop. But can you see that the drop from this height down here for the small resistor is much less than what we had for the large resistor? So another important thing to remember about series circuit is that large resistors drop large voltages, small resistors drop small voltages. They're directly proportional. Now that's it for series circuit. Let me show you a parallel circuit. Now here we have a parallel circuit. And the reason it's called a parallel circuit is because we have more than one path for current to flow. You can see that the, the pump, the battery, is sending current through here to this point. And now we call the point where the path can diverge a node. But current comes into the node and goes down through a large resistor closer to me, and then it goes through a smaller resistor closer to you. And now we can see some differences between the series circuit and the parallel circuit. First of all, what's most readily apparent is let's look at the voltage drops. Now if you remember, on the series circuit, the larger resistor had a larger voltage drop. But look at this now. If you see here, we have a level here on the large resistor that's about this large. And if you look closer to you, we have exactly the same difference in level on the small resistor. So in this case, both resistors appear to be dropping the same voltage. And in fact, they are. And that's because the battery is directly attached to the top and bottom of both of the resistors at the same time. So each resistor feels that battery voltage. All right, so an important thing to remember about parallel DC circuits is that the voltage drops on every resistor in parallel will always be equal 
and those will in turn be equal to the battery voltage. Now, the one other crucial thing that we need to point out, remember in the series circuit, current always stays constant. And that's because there's only one path for current to flow. If you look at this circuit, you'll see that because there's two paths now, each individual path can have a different rate. If you look at the flow meter going through the large resistor here, you see that it's turning fairly slowly compared to the meter attached to the small resistor. So another important thing to remember is that current in a parallel circuit will be largest through the smallest resistor and smallest through the biggest resistor. Another important thing to keep in mind is that the current that's coming out total before it gets to the node and the current coming back out will still be the same. And that pretty much summarizes the differences between parallel and series circuits.